Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, last Friday, the President, His Excellency the President of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, formed an emergency committee to deal with the issue of the uh, coronavirus. From the outset, this is not a Kenyan problem. This is a global phenomenon. Let me also say, this is a challenge. We are challenged, globally we are challenged. But let me also add that this is not something to lose hope about. I think there is so much information going out there that sometimes we are going the wrong direction and we need to clarify a number of things so that uh, a, Kenyans are more comfortable about the steps that the government has taken. Number one, the establishment of the Emergency Response Committee was in the 28th. What we were told to do, among other things, is that within seven days, this facility was supposed to be ready for treatment of cases. This is not an isolation facility. This is an isolation and treatment facility. And is the only one at the moment that we have around here. And I want to sincerely, sincerely thank the team that has worked day and night from the National Youth, the Ministry of Energy, the Ministry of Public Works, everybody has been here. I want to thank our donors, the ones who have been working with us ceaselessly to ensure that um, this facility is ready. We have uh, a national contingency plan to guide the, us in terms of prioritizing and preparedness. We have an emergency response unit that is going around everywhere that if there is any information about anything in any part of this country, we are preparing ourselves so that we are able to respond immediately. So we have activated the emergency operations center that is closely monitoring the evolution of the outbreak in China and the rest of the world in order for us to keep tabs with what we should do and to know what other countries are doing and therefore to do the same or even better. Let me also add that at all points of entry, at all points, all points of entry in this country, there is mandatory screening. Now, there are those who may not realize that you are being screened because sometimes we are using thermal scanners. So I have heard people say, I passed by the place and I wasn't screened. You were screened. You, didn't, you just didn't know that you were. So uh, let me make it clear, nobody is going to come into Kenya without screening. On our, at the airports, at the ports, we are making arrangements even in other areas where people walk into Kenya, let alone fly into Kenya, in Busia, in Namanga, in other uh, centers. In that respect also, we are working with the East African, East African community this morning. We met with doctors from uh, the five East African countries in my office, uh, and, this, and this is all to work together with other nations. This is not a singular nation activity. We are sensitizing and training throughout. There isn't a single day that we are not training some part of, in some, training in some part of this country. We have, we have trained over 1,100 health workers. We have deployed them in Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and other areas. And we are also sensitizing and cascading this training all the way to the community, to the community levels. We have procured sufficient uh, personal protective equipment um, for our workers. Let's never forget the first line of defense is our workers and we are making sure that our workers are properly protected. The, Dr. Kamole was explaining to you as we came in how this facility is going to work. You can see the, that it's being secured. The entrances will be from the other side, completely different entrance from the rest of the, of the facility.
just so that uh, there isn't any possibility of uh, anybody, anybody coming close or anybody coming in contact with those supposed to or civilians coming in contact. I want to mention that we are closely working with uh, the World Health Organizations, we are closely working with WHO, we are working with Africa CDC, and we are also working with uh, the US CDC amongst others. Members of the public are encouraged to remain vigilant as the risk is still high and are advised to continue taking precautionary measures at all times, at all times. Let's maintain basic hand and respiratory hygiene and safe food practices. We launched a free, we'll be sending information to your mobile phones for free under an arrangement we have made with the Safaricom. So everybody is, get, is going to be getting information about the disease, what to do, washing your hands, avoid close contact with the people showing any sign of this. Let's not panic. Let's not get to the point where you can't even uh, say jumbo to me. We have uh, temporarily lift, lifted the ban uh, so that um, the ban on the flight uh, from Italy, just one flight, to come to Kenya to lift the people who had been locked in when we banned the flights from uh, Verona and the rest of the Verona and um, Northern Italy, Milan. But there are people who are locked in in Malindi, about 800 of them. So what we have done is that we have allowed a flight to come in empty with nobody inside to come into the airport. There will be nobody who will disembark from that flight and the passengers will get in and then uh, have a, a safe flight home. Normally we send our visitors in much better fashion than that. But of course, I'm sure they all understand the circumstances under which we are, we are operating. Further, the government has with immediate effect banned all meetings and conferences of an international nature, repeat, of an international nature in Kenya. That is, if, an if a conference involves people traveling from Europe, traveling from the rest of the world in the Middle East and so on, in a conference or meetings with more than 15 people, we have asked that we postpone and suspend that at least for the next 30 days. The government has also issued a travel advisory to all Kenyans to avoid non-essential travel to high-risk countries for conferences of meetings where, again, there is going to be more than 15 people gathering. I would like to make it clear that events that are only for Kenyans, that don't involve people from outside Kenya, are continuing normally. The Beyond Zero Race, for example, on Sunday, we will be there, we will be running with uh, Her Excellency the First Lady. We are, we are backing her, and I invite all of you also. But events that involve persons from outside Kenya are the ones we are referring to. And I particularly want to say how sorry we are that uh, the Kenya Open uh, that was supposed to be at current because uh, because the European tour that you involve Europeans, people coming from Italy, Germany, and other centers that cannot continue, and we have to postpone it for the period that I have said for at least a month, so that we can monitor and see and weigh how things are going on. Now, in addition to that, as the as the committee is working. We are cascading our work all the way downwards. We are going to work with the other sectors. The Ministry of Transport is going to be working very closely with Matato. There will be, be, next week, there will be meetings with Matato owners. 
bus owners, also bus associations, and other modes of transport, including the border borders, so that we can, we can begin to work with them to ensure that certain levels of hygiene are being observed even as we transport our people. You all know what it would mean if a person in a matatu was, was infected. So we want um, material and communication to go to even the drivers of matatus, to conductors of matatus, so that they can see and observe and note if there is anything challenging before people would um, in conjunction with the Ministry of Trade and Finance, the Ministry of Health is also engaging the business community. We are quite aware and quite conversant with the economic, with the economic effects that um, what is going on around the world is going to have on us in Kenya. The tourism sector is going to be very severely affected. We are working with uh, organizations, global organizations, such as the World Bank, to see how we can mitigate the economic downfall and the economic effects that we know for sure are coming our way. And the county governments, through their respective governors, have been tasked also to ensure that necessary isolation wards in all level four and level five hospitals are set up and ready for use by the 15th of this month. In the next few days, the committee will be moving around. Individuals in various ministries are moving around the country. We are working very closely with the county governments, recognizing that health is a devout function, but also knowing that in this fight, there is no national or county governments. Indeed, there is no countries. This is a fight, you know, that is going to involve the cooperation of all of us around the globe. The ministry, in addition to this facility that you have just seen, we are also working very hard to establish additional treating, treatment facilities. We are exploring the possibility of utilizing the Kenyatta University teaching referral and research hospital to see whether we can now expand so that in the event, just in the event that this facility, this facility is overwhelmed, we hope not, we pray not, but in the event that that happens, we will have another 300 bed capacity that we are currently working on at uh, the Kenyatta uh, University Teaching Referral and Research Hospital. So I, I thank you all very much. I want to say a special thank you to the colleagues in the committee who have been working. I want to say a special thank you to all the doctors, all the nurses, all the clinical officers, all the health workers who are preparing themselves, who are working diligently to train themselves so that they can be our army in the fight against this, um, uh, this disease. As I said, Let's not panic. Let's just observe. Let's just observe what we are advised by the Ministry of Health to, to observe, by the WHO, but there should not be panic. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.